Hey guys, this is Elliot the iPad Pro, and in this video we're going to talk about what your computer terminal is and how to use it. Then I'll give examples of why you want to use your terminal, and I'll show how it's useful for building applications like a video game. So before we start typing anything, what even is your terminal? So in movies, when you see hackers typing on a black screen with green letters, that's the computer terminal. And so you know how you can control your computer with a mouse or a pencil? Well, the terminal is just another way to control your computer. In fact, you can think of it as being the original way to control a computer. Before Steve Jobs ever made the Mac with a mouse and a pretty screen, this is how people use their computer. And since the terminal controls the computer, anything you can do with a mouse or a pencil, you can do on the terminal. In fact, you can do even more stuff on the terminal. You just have to know how. So, in order to use the Linux terminal, the first thing you need to have is Linux. If you're using IO, then you have everything you need, because I built IO on top of Linux. And if you don't have Linux yet, I really recommend that you get IO. It's hands down the easiest way to install everything you need to do programming, including Linux. Okay, so let's say you're using IO. How do you even get to the terminal? Well, just like when you're creating a new notebook, click New. But this time, instead of creating a notebook file, go down to Other and click Terminal. This will bring up a new terminal where you can start typing commands. So now we're at the scariest part of learning something new, which is, what is the first step? What can I even type? But try not to worry. Even if you make a mistake typing something random, the computer will just tell you that there was an error. But when it comes to what you actually should type first, remember when I said that the terminal is just another way of controlling your computer? Well, how about we start by doing all the same commands that you usually do on a graphical interface. Then I'll explain how this is actually really useful. So when you think about it, the first thing you usually do when you open your computer is you move around all these different folders to look for a file that you can work on. So why don't we start by learning about how to move around your computer inside the terminal. So when you move around your computer, you're always in some folder. Like, right now we're in public, and then we'll move to the home folder. Well, the terminal works the same way. We're always in some folder, and then we can move back or forward into other folders. So how do you actually know which folder you're in? Well, usually you have a little thing at the top of your screen that tells you which folder you're inside of. And the terminal is the same way. There's a command called pwd that tells you the folder that you're currently located at. You can see that it tells us that we're located at home slash Jovian, but where even is that? Like, on our computer, we don't see anything called home slash Jovian anywhere. Well, to get a better idea of what this actually is, how about we run another command, which is ls. So the command ls shows you all the folders and files that are inside of your current location. And here we see the folders apps, downloads, private, and public. And those are the same folders we see on the home page of IO. So now we know that the home page of IO is actually at this location on your computer called slash home slash Jovian. So what is this slash home slash Jovian thing? Well, home is just the name of a folder, and Jovian is just the name of another folder inside of home. So PWD is telling you that you're located in a folder called Jovian inside another folder called Home. You can actually think of your entire computer as being just a bunch of folders that are connected to each other. And then inside those folders, you have different files that you can select. You can think of all these folders as being limbs of a tree branching out into these different directions from a single root folder. This root folder is actually called the root and it's symbolized with just a slash. So from the root, you have a folder called Home, and then from there, you have another folder called Jovian, and then from Jovian, you have the four folders you know called Apps, Downloads, Public, and Private, and then the tree can keep on going from there. Okay, so to prove that this is how your computer actually works, let's take a look at the root folder. So to get to the root, just type CD and then slash enter. Now when we type pwd, all we see is a slash. When we type ls, we see all of the folders and files inside of root. Now here you'll see a lot of folders that you've never seen before. And these are basically the folders that control your computer. 
So everything in a computer is either a folder or a file, and these are all the files that are running in the background that you never really see. If you want, you can go into these folders and see what they look like, but I really don't recommend changing any of them unless you really know what you're doing. So what are those fast lines of code that I just typed to move in and outside of the folder called lib? Well, if you type cd and then some folder name, like home for instance, then you go inside of the folder that's inside of root. And since we're in home, when we type ls, we should see some folder called Jovian, which we totally do. Also, when we type pwd, you see that we're now located at slash home. If you type cd and Jovian, you see that we are in the exact same place that we were when we started. Which, if we type pwd, we see is slash home slash Jovian. Then, if we want to check all of the folders that are inside of public, we can just type cd public and check it out with ls. To go back to home slash Jovian, what you can do is type cd and then dot dot. This will take you to the folder that your current folder is inside of. So, for instance, when we type pwd, we see that we're back inside of home Jovian. You could also get to a file by typing the entire folder name. For instance, you could type cd slash home slash Jovian to also get inside of this exact same folder. As an exercise, I recommend just exploring around your computer using the commands cd, pwd, and ls, because these are hands down the three commands that you will use the most when you're on the terminal. So you might be wondering what CD, PWD, and LS actually stand for. Well, I don't actually know what these commands actually stand for, but in my brain, CD stands for change directory, where directory is just another word for folder. And then LS stands for list stuff, like listing all of the folders and files. And then PWD stands for print where is directory, since it prints the path to the current directory or folder. Okay, so now we know how to move around the computer, but let's try to actually create some stuff, like a folder or a file. So let's say that for this tutorial, we're going to create a new project. And we're going to create this project inside a new folder called My First Bash, and we're going to put that folder inside of public. So we already know how to do this on IO with the new folder button, but let's see if we can do this just using the terminal. So the first thing we would do is cd into public. By the way, if you want to type less stuff, after cd, you can always type the name of where you want to go and then hit tab and it will finish the things for you. Then if you hit tab again, it will actually list all of the files and folders inside of that location. But anyways, what we want to do right now is create a new folder called My First Bash. And we're calling this folder My First Bash because even though we're inside the terminal, the actual language that we're speaking is called Bash. So for instance, CD and LS are commands that are part of the Bash language. So to create a new folder, the Bash command is mkdir, and I think this stands for Make Directory. Then we're going to call our folder my first bash. Okay, now when we press ls, we see that we have a new folder called my first bash. Let's cd into this folder. So one minor thing is that you now have to refresh this page in order to see the next line that you're typing in the terminal. This is a minor glitch, and by IO version 3.1, I'll have it so you can just keep typing and it'll scroll down. Okay, so I just refreshed the terminal, and now we can keep on typing. So currently, there's nothing inside of my first bash, but we can fix this by creating a file. To do this, type touch and then the file name. I'll call mine my first file. Now when we type ls, we see there's a file. So we have a file, but how do we actually do anything with it? Well, the first thing you probably want to do is add some text to it. And for that, we're going to use the command echo. So if we type echo and then just hello in parentheses, we'll print the word hello to the screen. But instead, if we type echo and then hello, and then we add these little arrow signs, and then the name of our file, we'll put the word hello into the file. Now to prove that the word hello is actually in the file, type cat and then the file name. And now we see the word hello print to the screen. 
Okay, so so far I've showed you how to do all of these things in the terminal that you can already do on your computer, and you might be wondering, how is this even useful? Well, first off, the terminal allows you to do really important things that are actually impossible to do without it. And second, the fact that we're actually typing code to control the computer is really important. Because when something is in code, that means you can put it inside a computer program. So right now, how about we build a Python program that uses the knowledge that we learned? So for this, go inside of public and then go inside of the my first bash folder that we created. Then click new and create a new Python notebook. Okay, but before we start creating the program, let's pretend like there's some Python tools or packages that we haven't installed. So in order to install new Python packages, we actually need to use the terminal. But we can actually use the terminal inside a Jupyter Notebook. So inside a code cell, if you press the exclamation mark, then you can type a terminal command. For instance, exclamation mark ls will show you what's inside of the current folder. We see that at my first bash, we have the file that we created and this Jupyter Notebook. Let's rename this notebook program with bash. Now when we rerun ls, we see that the name of the notebook has changed. So let's pretend that there's a package called Wasabi that we need to use for our program. Right now, we don't have Wasabi on our computer. But we can install this package using the terminal. Type exclamation mark pip install Wasabi, and then this will install Wasabi onto your computer. Now when we try import Wasabi, we see that it's there. Okay, now let's build a pretend program. And for this pretend program, we're going to be building a video game. And in this video game, you're going to save a user's name to a file. Well, remember, we can use the echo command to save some text to a file. Here we're going to save the name user1 to a file that we create called username. Then when we type cat username, we see user1 is there. We can also rerun ls to make sure that the file is actually there. Okay, to actually build our program, we're going to use a package called ipywidgets, which makes building applications super easy. So we can actually rewrite this part of the program in just three lines of code. So let's do it. First off, we're going to tell Python that we're going to build an interactive program where the user manually clicks a box to save the username. And the username will be an input in a text box that the user can type. We'll then write a Python function that does this. We'll call this Python function saveUser, and it'll take the username as its input, and then it'll save it to the file username. Next, we just use that same echo command from before to save the user's input into the file called username. And that's it. We have our program. So let's check that it works by typing a fake username. Now when we go back to the main page and we open the file called username, we'll see that it has the text, check it. So that's really awesome that we can do that with just three lines of code. But if you think about it, when you're building a game, you also need a way to load in the user's information to the game. So let's add one more little piece to our program that allows us to get the username from the file called username. So again, we can do this with just three lines of code. Like before, we're going to build an interactive program, but this time the only thing that there will be is a button that the user clicks to get the username. Then we create a Python function called getUser that actually does this. And do you know the one line of code that we'll type to print the username? Well, we'll use the terminal's cat command that I talked about earlier. And that's our program. So when we run this, you'll see that we now have a button. And when we click it, we'll get the username printed to the screen. Now, if we run the web button, we'll have something that actually looks like an application with a way to save the user's information and a way to get it back. So let's say you do end up building a real video game. How do you share it with everyone else in IO? Well, for that, you can go inside of your apps and then you can use the application IO Online. IO Online gives you a way to back up your work in the cloud and a way to share your programs with other people. When Welcome to IO Online has loaded, click the web button. Now under IO Setup, sign in with your GitHub account. If you don't have a Microsoft GitHub account, you can create one by following the link. All right, now that I logged in with GitHub, I can go to the IO Newsroom, and when I click Refresh, I can see all of the programs that other people have been working on. 
it's really exciting to see that now I'm not just the only person publishing code on IO Online. To publish the fake video game we made, scroll up to Manage Files. Then reload your public files. Now when you click Add for My First Bash, you'll add your video game to the IO Newsroom. Then when you scroll down to the Newsroom and you refresh it, you'll see your application at the top of the list. I should also mention that you should regularly check Update Apps because I'm updating my apps all of the time. And if you get this minor glitch that will be fixed by 3.1, just click the Refresh button again. When you click Update, your application inside of the Apps folder will be updated to the latest version. For instance, we just updated Cytoscape. And finally, when you're done using IO Online, or any program for that matter, remember to click the red lightning bolt icon. This will make sure that your programs load faster in the future. Alright, well I think that covers everything. So in this video, you saw how to use the Linux Ubuntu terminal. And then you saw how the terminal can be used to do things that are otherwise impossible on your computer. We also showed how bash commands can be super useful when you're building programs in Python. As an exercise, see if you can figure out the difference between using the echo command with just one right arrow and instead with two right arrows. Alright, well what do you guys think of the tutorial? What do you guys want to see in future tutorials? Let me know in the comments. This is Elliot the iPad Pro. See you guys next video.